Okay, now let's check out Mark's recipe for this morning in the Beko kitchen. Morning, Mark. Good morning, good morning. What are we doing today? Right, so we've got pork and prawn balls. Excellent. <laughs> so, we, you know, we've got all the Asian flavours in there. We're going to roll them, we're going to fry them, and then we're going to finish them off in a broth. I nice love it. Asian broth. So what are some of the flavours we've got in here? Look at this ginger, Chinese five spice, yep. that's a goodie. Uh, we've got some oyster sauce there, some fish sauce, some oh. soy. You know, it's going to be a nice uh, broth made with this uh, beautiful beef stock there as well. Oh, I'm very much looking forward to getting stuck in and making this recipe. We'll show you that a little later on. And Mark, we are making prawn and pork balls in a broth this morning. And I think this is the third time you've had me roll balls <laughs> on the show. People are starting to ask questions. <laughs> what do we need to do, Mark? Right, so first of all, We've got this uh, beautiful beef stock here. I'm gonna pop that in there, that's a hot pan. It's pleased to see us. Um, and that's gonna be the base of our broth. So I'm just gonna bring that to the boil and then I'm gonna show you all the, uh, the flavorings and uh, sauces we're gonna put in there a little bit later. Great, so, so that can do that. doing its thing there. That is doing its thing. Right, so now we need to make our balls. So pork, pork mince. mince, yes. Great. So really good one. So um, just, you know, get it in the bowl, work it a little bit. Mm -hmm and just break it up and then I'm going to pop this over here Great. and you can grate the ginger on this setting. Fantastic. So we're going to flavour it with some ginger and then... This is always the bit where I'm sure I'm going to shave off the tip of my fingers. It's all flavour, Braden. It's all flavour. Yeah, excellent. Well, if you get a piece of my <laughs> But you can eat your, eat your own balls Call it flavour. you your finger into it. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then we've got some chives as well, which is going to go into it. So I'm doing this whole stick of yeah, ginger? Yeah, do the whole stick, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. It's always this bit where everything that I don't want to jiggle starts to jiggle. <laughs> and then we've got some um, prawn cutlets. So if you've got the um, the shell still on there, or the end of the tail still on there, you can just yep. sort of pull it and uh, take the end off. Great. Now are you um, going to be sort of dissecting those a little bit? Uh, we're just going to chop them all up. So you can do it by oh, hand. Right. And with a sharp knife and sort of run over it, you know, if you, you can have a little bit more texture if you do it by hand. Right. Um, or, you know, if you uh, if you want to speed up the process, you can do it in a, you know, food processor and just sort of pulse it. Oh, cool. You know, so you can do it really fast. I do want to speed up the process. <laughs> this just seems to be taking forever. It's because I'm so nervous of, you know, getting the old fingies. <laughs> is there actually any ginger coming out? Yeah, oh, there is, well, there is, no, there, yeah. There's a little bit. It's just, you know, good things take time, Mark. Right, so you're chopping those up. We've got the chives. Oh, the chives are in there, so those yeah. ones are superfluous. <laughs> chives are already in there. And you'll notice when you once you start chopping the prawns up, you know it all sort of it almost sort of sticks together. You know, yeah, it's sort a bit of, it's sort of, like a paste. Yeah, yeah, it goes like a paste. So this is going to help um, stick everything together as well. So it's really right. good. You know, and it's quite nice to have a little bit of texture. So even if you do it in the food processor and um, you know pulse it down, just be careful you don't do it into a puree. Can I stop? Uh, no, all of it. Oh, that's the recipe. <laughs> you just wait. <laughs> so prawns go in there. I see, I've, the problem is I've got fat fingers. <laughs> and yeah, they're just, oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> no, that should be all right now. That should be Thank good. Thank you. Right, and then you can give it uh, give it a good season with some salt and pepper, and then oh, and then start giving it a really good mix through. I'm going to chop the rest of those prawns, and then that's pretty much our prawn mix. It's always a good idea to once you've seasoned it and mixed it, just fry a little bit off in the pan and taste it. You know, just see just, just see to make where sure it's right. Yeah, where your seasoning is. Okay. Um, you know, if you need any more of the ingredients, you can add them at that stage, and okay. then good idea then pop them in the fridge for about sort of 10 20 minutes it'll just firm up slightly and it'll make it a lot easier to roll so that's just a functional thing that doesn't do anything for flavor or anything no, like that no 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 just uh, just firms the mixture up yeah i mean if you if you're under time restraints you don't need to do that sure um you know setting in the fridge but if you do it just it does help when you actually come to shape the um the balls and that's the point where i just sort of sit back and have another glass of wine and go i have to sit here because I'm letting my balls firm up. <laughs> exactly, it's, it's functional and, and you get often, to have another glass of wine. Yeah, true, that's often what you'll do before you entertain guests. <laughs> okay, we look forward to coming back to see the rest of this recipe, getting the next steps in these tasty balls, right after we catch up with Holly. What's next in our prawn and pork balls? All right, so you've got the mixture there, so that's really good. So we're just going to shape them into small balls, so you can get a teaspoon. Yep. And then pop it on your hands. And if you chill the mixture as, as well, it's going to stick less to your hands. All right, so you just want to sort of compact it as you go around, sort of squeeze and roll and shape so you're left with a nice tight Squeeze ball. and roll. Do you yeah, about a mouthful sort of size. 
like that. You can carry on doing those. Do you reckon we could do a couple of sort of rugby bait, rugby shaped was, ones? Because Phil Gifford's in the studio. I was so. thinking that, yeah. Yeah, good luck with those. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, that's good. Look at that. Rugby themed. I made it myself. <laughs> <laughs> right, so once you've got um, once you've got a few there, I've got a pan on here, and what we're going to do is a little bit of oil in there, and you're just going to get some nice colour on sort of all sides. Okay. But you don't need to get it cooked here because we're going to finish it off in the broth. Right. Right, and speaking okay, so of broth, so our stock's come up to the boil. So again, that, that's beef stock? That is just beef stock, so that's all, all there is in there at the moment. So now, once it's come to the boil, I've got a bit of ginger. Just going to slice that, pop that in. A little bit of lemongrass as well. Now I notice that I had to shave the ends of my fingers off for that ginger, and then you just come along and <laughs> slice it. <laughs> So this must be an old chef trick. Get the new guy to maim himself. It anyway, is. you were you know saying? Me so well. <laughs> right, so lemongrass. So I've taken the about an inch, inch and a half off the top, so it's the really woody bit. And this is sort of this is the next section. Yep. I peel the outside layers off, and then what you can do if you want, you can you know you can shave it nice and fine, like really really fine if you want, and actually yep. serve that in the broth. Ah. Sort of like that, that's okay. You know, so it'll sort of soften slightly, you'll get that nice bit of texture. Or you can leave it as a whole chunk and then back of the knife, just sort of, you know, bash it up a little bit, release all those juices and then chuck it in and then we can remove that later. Excellent. Now I've got my mincy fingers here, so can we, do we is that enough to start putting yeah, them no, in Yeah, no, that's good, that's good. You right. did that. Here's a, oh, there you go, perfect. Right. So that's simmering away, that's getting some flavour. Right, I'm going to add some more ingredients now. So I've got some oyster sauce. Which goes in there. For me to. Uh... How about a teaspoon? Yeah, look, that'd be great. Just a big <laughs> appliance to make sure that I really don't burn myself. Uh, I've got some soy sauce as well going in there. Some hoisin sauce as well. Just give it a nice depth of flavour into this broth. Some of this Chinese five spice. You like Chinese spice? I love Chinese five spice. One of those things. It, it, I didn't realise for many years what it was until I had something within it. I went, oh, I've had that in a lot, but I just never had it at home. So yeah, I'm a big fan of that now. That's really good, and, and you know, in a lot of um, classic Chinese recipes, that was a little bit of fish sauce as well. Yeah. And then all we're going to do now is just going to simmer this down a little bit. There you go. Nice, nice bit of colour there. So keep turning them around. Right. I've got a little bit of corn flour. So again, that's thickening purposes here. Yeah, yeah. So Great. I'm just going to put some cold liquid in there. So you can put some water in there or even a little bit of stock. Ooh. Dissolve that in and then I'm going to pour that into the broth and cook that out. And there's just a little bit in there, just that, you know, you still want it quite brothy. It's just to thicken it ever so slightly. So when you say cook that out, what, is, what does that mean? Yeah, you, well, you need to bring it to the boil and, and, and cook it for like a minute or two. Just to make right. sure you haven't got that sort of floury taste. Oh, okay. You cool. know, and all the flour sort of thickened. That goes in there, and it's, right. so it's still going to be quite liquidy, but it's yep. just going to, almost just going to coat the back of a spoon, you know. It's just slightly viscous. Viscous, beautiful word there. I've been that paying attention. In. Right, so obviously these, I'm um, so you know, going to just keep rolling them around yeah, that, so that, that we get. Yep, that's really good. And then once you've got a nice colour, we're going to drop them back in the broth and probably just uh, slowly simmer them and poach them for right. probably about you know five ten minutes, and it will they'll just absorb all those flavours. Uh, and then just to finish the dish, all we've got is just a bit of baby spinach in the bowl, and then the heat will just wilt, wilt that it. down, and uh, some spring onions, and Excellent. that is it. Phil's so rugby ball is looking not quite like a rugby ball, it's looking like a different type of ball. Oh, which moment, one is it? So we'll come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot wait to try it all, of course. And if you'd like to try it at home, you can get the full details of the recipe on our website. <laughs> How are your balls looking? Check them out. Well, Good, huh? I am. Tasty balls. <laughs> What's on the menu tomorrow? <laughs> well, I'm going to be joined by Shren Hamburger, and we're going to be cooking on the new Everjewel Barbecue by Heston Blumenthal, and I'm going to share my interview with the man himself. I was so jealous you got to do that. Really looking forward to it.